My name is Nisha and I'm an SHO working in acute medicine and I'm going to be giving a presentation looking at how to assess the NG tube placement on a chest x-ray. So the learning objectives for this presentation are to first of all understand the different methods used to confirm correct NG tube position, to correctly identify anatomical line marks on a chest x-ray, to assess NG tube placement on a chest x-ray and therefore determine whether an NG tube is safe or unsafe to use, and to understand the complications associated with NG tube placement. So there are a number of indications for the use of NG tubes. One of the main ones is for feeding. NICE guidelines state that NG tubes are indicated in patients who are malnourished or at risk of malnourishment who have an inadequate or unsafe oral intake and a functional accessible GI tract. Examples where both of these are met include in neurological conditions causing dysphagia or an unsafe swallow, such as stroke, in patients with a low GCS, and also NG feeding is often used to prepare malnourished patients for major abdominal surgery. In general, NG tube feeding is only advised for up to four weeks. After this time, the aim would be to get the patient to begin feeding orally or to change to more long-term measures such as a PEG. It can also be used for the delivery of medications, so deliver the medications directly into the stomach. It can also be used for removal of gastric contents, so with the initial and continued gastric decompression in intubated patients, or for symptom relief and bowel rest in patients with bowel obstruction, and also for aspirating ingested toxic material. It also has diagnostic purposes, so in the assessment of the presence or volume of upper GI bleeding, and also in the administration of radiographic contrast. So it's important to understand the contraindications to NG tube insertion. The absolute contraindications include mid-phase trauma and recent nasal surgery, and the relative contraindications include coagulation abnormalities, recent alkaline ingestion, which increase the risk of esophageal rupture, esophageal varices, either untreated or recently banded cauterized, and esophageal strictures. In the presence of the relative contraindications, the advantages and disadvantages of NG placement will have to be adjudged against the reason for the NG and the patient's condition. So there are two main methods for confirming tube position. The first method is measurement of aspirate pH using indicator paper. So if the NG tube was placed in the correct position in the stomach, you'd expect that aspirate pH to be 5.5 or less. However, if say it was incorrectly placed in the lung, you'd expect a higher pH of six or more. There are some drawbacks to this method. So stomach pH can be altered by medications, for example, proton pump inhibitors, and also obtaining aspirate from NG tubes can be difficult, particularly when using fine bore tubes. The second method, which we'll be exploring today, is chest x-rays. Um, and as you will come to see, however, there is a risk of misinterpretation of the chest x-rays. You do have some radiation exposure, although this is minimal. There is often a loss of feeding time whilst either you're awaiting the chest x-ray or in some trust that chest x-rays need to be reported before the NG tubes can be used. And also access may be more limited in the community settings. It is essential that you can recognise key anatomical landmarks on a chest x-ray to safely confirm NG tube placement. So first of all, you have the trachea. You have the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus. You have the carina, which is the bifurcation of the right and left main bronchus. You have the diaphragm, the right hemidiaphragm and the left hemidiaphragm. And you have the aortic knuckle. So this is just the chest x-ray appearance of the distal aortic arch. So this is the thoracic aorta arching backwards over the left main bronchus and the pulmonary vessels. Um, the esophagus itself is actually quite difficult to visualise on a chest x-ray, but it typically lies to the left of the trachea and medially to the aortic arch. So there are five steps that you should use to confirm the NG tube position on a chest x-ray. But before you do this, you should make sure that you've got the correct patient and the correct date and time for the chest x-ray. And you should also look at the chest x-ray viewing field. Does it include the upper esophagus and does it extend beyond the diaphragm so that you can actually use these five steps? So step number one, does the NG tube descend in the midline following the path of the esophagus? Does the NG clearly bisect the carina or bronchi? 
Does it cross the diaphragm in the midline? The tip should clearly be visible below the left hemidiaphragm. And ideally, the tip should be at least 10 centimetres beyond the gastroesophageal junction. This flowchart summarises those five steps. Um, and therefore, you can use this to help identify whether the NG tube is in a correct position and whether it can be used. There are some complications associated with NG tubes, um, and overall complications occur in about 1 to 3% of cases, with fatal sequelae in about 0.3% of cases. These complications include upper airway complications, such as epistaxis from insertion trauma, lower airway, so aspiration pneumonia, so if you feed through a tube incorrectly placed in the lung, pneumothorax, hemorrhage, empyema, enteral, GI perforation and mediastinus or peritonitis, GI obstruction, knotting or tangling of the tube, intramural esophageal dissection even, intracranial and spinal canal, which is rare, but you can have meningitis or focal neurological deficits. So now we're going to go through a few chest x-ray cases and put in what we've learnt into practice. Um, so go through those few steps and identify whether the NG tube is correctly or incorrectly placed and therefore whether it is safe or unsafe to use. You can either pause the video here and go through the steps yourself and rejoin to find if you got the question correct or you can continue along. So first of all, before we do anything, we need to confirm that we have the right patient and the right chest x-ray. So you need to confirm the patient's name, date of birth, hospital number, and the date and time of the chest x-ray. Um, then you want to confirm whether the actual x-ray viewing field includes everything that you need. So it should have the upper esophagus and extend to below the diaphragm. So you can see the whole NG tube. So first of all, if we follow those steps, Number one, does the um, NG tube uh, descend in the midline following the path of the esophagus? Yes. Does it clearly bisect the carina or bronchi? Yes. Does it cross the diaphragm in the middle? Yes. And is the tip clearly visible below the left hemidiaphragm? Yes, it's here. Ideally, the tip should be at least 10 centimetres beyond the gastroesophageal junction, which it looks like it is on this x-ray. So, this is a correctly placed NG tube. This slide is to demonstrate that an NG tube can become coiled in the upper airway. So if you don't see an NG tube on the chest x-ray, this is something to think about. OK, so with our next chest x-ray case, so again, we're going to begin by confirming the patient's name, date of birth, their hospital number and the date and time of this chest x-ray before we do anything else. Um, then we're going to look at the entire chest x-ray. Is it a good viewing field and does it include the upper esophagus and extend beyond, beyond the diaphragm? It does in this case. So first of all, with step number one, does the NG tube descend in the midline following the path of the esophagus? So yes, it is descending in the midline. Does it clearly bisect the carina or bronchi? Step number two, no. In fact, here we can see it traveling down into the right main bronchus and then coiling back on itself and going into the left main bronchus here. So the tip ending in the left main bronchus. So again here, we can then tell that this is an incorrectly placed NG tube and it's been coiled back down both bronchi with the NG tip ending up in the left main bronchus. So with our next chest x-ray we have correctly identified our patient, we have got the correct date and time of the chest x-ray, we are looking at the lung fields which includes the upper esophagus and extends beyond the diaphragm so we can use our five steps. Step number one, the NG tube descending in the midline following the path of the esophagus? Yes. Um, is the NG tube clearly bisecting the carina or bronchi? No. So actually at step number two, you can see it's actually going into the right main bronchus into the right lung. And it actually looks like unfortunately they have fed the patient through this tube and you can see the material in the right lung here. So this is actually an incorrectly placed 
NG tube into the right main bronchus. So again, with our next chest x-ray case, so we're going to first of all confirm the patient's name, date of birth, the hospital number and the date and time of the chest x-ray. Um, we're going to look at the viewing field, so it does include the upper esophagus and extend beyond the diaphragm, which this one does. And then we can start to work through those five steps. Um, in this case, kind of, don't be distracted by all the other lines. You can see they've probably got some ECG lines, they've got some um, lines for fluids. I think that might be a central line there, so this might be an ITU patient. Um, but we're going to start with the NG tube here. And the number one, does it ascend in the midline following the path of the esophagus? Initially it does. Does it clearly bisect the carina or bronchi? No, so this one is passing down straight into the left main bronchus. So it's not bisecting the carina or the bronchi, it's going into the left main bronchus and then ending up in the lung here with the tip here. Um, so this is a incorrect placement um, of an NG tube in the left main bronchus. Um, so this just demonstrates that an NG tube can be positioned in either left or right main bronchus as per the previous chest x-ray, but still appear in the midline. So this is why we follow these steps and hence why the single criterion of an NG tube appearing in the midline is not satisfactory evidence to confirm safe placement. So with this chest x-ray, we've correctly identified our patient and the date and time of the chest x-ray. We've looked at the x-ray viewing fields, which includes the upper esophagus and extends to be on the diaphragm. We're going to use those five steps and we're looking at the NG tube, which is descending in the midline following the path of the esophagus. Num step number two, is it bisecting the carina or bronchi? Yes. Step number three, is it crossing the diaphragm at the middle? Yes. Step number four, is the tip clearly visible below the left hemidiaphragm? No. So here you can actually see the tip kinking back on itself and the tip is now at the level of the left hemidiaphragm. So this is an incorrectly placed NG tube which is kinked in the stomach and if you use this NG tube it puts the patient at risk of aspiration or reflux. So this is not, this is not safe to use. So with this chest x-ray, we've um, identified the right patient and the date and time of the chest x-ray, and we've identified that we can see the upper esophagus and to below the diaphragm on the chest x-ray. So we're happy to use our five steps. We're following the NG tube in the midline, following the path of the esophagus. Yes. Is bisecting the carina? Yes. Is it crossing the diaphragm in the midline? No. So we can actually see the NG tube here above the diaphragm and the tip is therefore not below the left hemidiaphragm. So the tip is sitting here in the distal esophagus. So therefore, um, this NG tube has not been advanced far enough into the stomach and would need to be advanced further for it to be safe to use. So with our last and final chest x-ray of this presentation, we have got the right patient and date and time, and we've looked at the x-ray fields which show the upper esophagus and extend to beyond the diaphragm. We're using our five steps. So first of all, the NG is descending in the midline following the path of the esophagus. But from there, we get a bit lost. We can't see whether it's bisecting the carina, and we can't see whether it is um, passing through the midline of the diaphragm or whether the tip is below the left hemidiaphragm. In fact, we kind of completely lose the tip of the NG around here as the x-ray is very obscured and hazy. And therefore, um, this is an inadequate chest x-ray and it wouldn't be safe to say that the NG is safe to use based on this chest x-ray. So these are the resources I used to create this presentation. If you would like to read more about this topic or would like to just test yourself by looking at some more chest x-rays, please go ahead and have a look at these resources. So this concludes my presentation with Radcast. I hope it gave you a good overview as to how to confirm NG tube position on a chest X-ray and identify those NG tubes that can and cannot be used. And I hope you can take some tips and tricks into your everyday practice. Thank you.